Man, I cannot believe you guys came back for another one. But thank you so much, because, you know, we're here to entertain for the most part. I am Jake with Hydra. And, of course, you know most of these other people. We'll go through them anyway. We got Reese with Eeyore. Reese, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Reese, and I'm addicted to cat milk. (laughs) Nice to meet you, Reese. Hopefully we have less cats this time. (laughs) Then we got Terry the Sheriff. I'm Terry. I have zero cats. <laughs> we got Dick, the master of ceremony, the man who puts most of our content together that, for these. Hello? I'm tired. Yeah, and you would be. And our first guest of the night, hopefully there might be more. We don't know. They're going to pop in or whatever. It is Tom, and he is from where, Tom? I am from just outside London in England. It is currently midnight. Okay, well, you're a long ways away, but you're a trooper for sticking in with us. So, we'll go over to Dick to start, and he'll give us the rundown of kind of what we're going to go through tonight. Well, what I have on the agenda, which we probably won't get to, because if you believe it or not, when we did our last uh, five-hour live stream, we did not get to all the agendas, items, and we don't plan on going that late tonight. Um, But... I've got, uh, we're going to do some interesting stuff since BattleBots isn't on anymore. Tom's going to fill us in on a little bit of the history and great and weird robots throughout time from uh, Robot Wars. Um, I've got some old pictures of mostly Jake uh, that we're going to talk about in some of the original uh, Team Falcon pictures. Um, I've got... I think it's about time that we cover a couple of fights. We've done fights with guests against us, but we've never done some fights that we've done against each other. So I've got uh, some videos of uh, 2EZ and YU812, and I've also got... uh, um, Maybe we'll get to what the hell's going on with Pakistan robot fighting and uh, um, a bunch of other things, really. Just some miscellaneous stuff. But uh, Tom graciously put together a little package of six so far of the robots that he thinks that American Roboteers should probably know about. And um, I'm going to kick it over to Tom. So when we talk about the uh, unique and weird and wonderful robots from the history of UK Robot Wars, it's very hard to condense them down into six because there were so many of them. So we're barely scratching the surface, but I've picked out six of mixed success, shall we say. Some really good ones, some not so good ones, and some just downright weird ones. So this won't help Reese's cat addiction to start with, but we start with... I like this one. I like this one already. (laughs) Gotta be his favorite. So I picked out Pussycat. Um, Firstly, because as you can see, just by the name, it um, always lands on its feet with the way that they've assembled their um, the wheel assembly. And I would also say that, particularly in the UK, they were one of the first teams to really build a saw blade that could actually do anything. Um, it was, a, for the most part, a family team. Uh, Alan, and Alan and David Gribble uh, first took part in the Third Wars with Pussycat, but they also had a different robot in the very beginning of the show. Um, the... Uh, there you go. That's the uh, Series 5 design right there. And, that, and at that point, the blade would be at 3,500 RPM. That's the uh, the highest that they managed to get it to go. And what was so good about it was just how precise they could get a robot so difficult to drive and so difficult to handle, how precise they could get. Right there, that's a shot from the Series 4 Grand Final, and they could just snipe wheels and snipe so many ridiculous places that you could just never get to beforehand. And that young man there is David Gribble, who was one of the best drivers in all of Robot Wars. Is that a nipple on the front there? What is that? <laughs> oh, that's so when it was lay- when it was laying on its front, it could drive drive forwards like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, one of the few robots to beat Razor twice. Not many people could say they did that. They beat Razor twice. They beat Hypnodisc. I like that photo from before where they're sniping the wheel. Runner up in series four. Now you understand that as us as UK not people, uh, we don't know much about these bots that you're actually saying anything about, right? Like I don't know who Razorback is. 
<laughs> Hopefully that's on the oh. list. Oh, Razor? You you got to know Razor. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, it's Lord. just Whoa. like um, what's the what's the p pinchy clamp bot that we have quantum. now? Quantum. It's just like Quantum. Ah, uh, well, not just like, but yeah, sort of one of the pioneers of the Crusher, and the first to really sort of make it work and really put a staple on that design. A lot of people sort of say, "Oh, Quantum is a sort of a Razor copy or a later version of Razor." So they had a decent weapon, actually, as far as UK bots go back in the day. Oh yeah, Pussycat, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they could snipe wheels, they could cut into armor. Nobody was really prepared for a weapon like this at that point. I actually have the um, one of the dishonorable mentions to be one of the few teams to be disqualified from Robot Wars in the in series three. There, there's their Razor. Exploded. That's Razor for, there. For what reason did they get DQ'd? Uh, because their blade shattered. Oh. Their blade actually shattered in series three. And they got disqualified for it. But they came back, and this is Series 4, they came back with a much more improved design, as you'll see in this fight. I also picked this fight because it's one of the first examples of going for your opponent when they can't defend themselves. I actually really like this designer of uh, Pussycat with its the way the wheels are set up where you can't really get into a position that you can't get yourself out of. Yeah, they always landed on their feet. And they could always just get back into the fight. High ground clearance, and it may struggle in today's times if it was rebuilt today, but for its time, there wasn't much that could really handle it. What year was this? This is uh, year 2000. Okay. It's got good reach. Really good reach, and it, like I said, it could get into places that other robots couldn't. Like, it can really precisely get to the wheels, cut through the armor. And this is what I mean. I picked this fight because Razor is stranded. Well, they just gave up. And they gave up, but Pussycat didn't. Oh, more hits, <laughs> more hits! Where did we see this before? <clears throat> oh, there's the That's house spot. I, mean. I can't remember yeah, another instance. Shot. Yeah, honestly, the only house spot I can even remember is Matilda. I think that was the house pot, right? Yeah, Matilda was amazing. Okay, that, that's 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 the only one I remember. So it's got to be my favorite, then, right? Yeah, this is the fir the first time they defeated Razor. Not many teams could could do that, but they always had their number. They could snipe their wheels out. It so, was so well driven for such an awkward design. How much extra damage do the house bots do to UK bots in general? It could range from anything from just putting them into pit to just completely destroying them till there was nothing left, depending on how the producers felt that day. So it was a made-for-TV show, not a real combat event? Robot Wars was very much more about the spectacle than just letting them fight. Particularly back then as well, a lot of robots would just kind of die on their own. So it was almost like a punishment or a way to fill time and make something for TV when the robots couldn't deliver. All right, so what have we got next then? What's the second bot? Is this, this in a tier at all of like best to worst or how are we going through this list? Not quite best to worst. Some of them will be really good like Pussycat came runner up. This one is one of the more infamous robots from Robot Wars. Oh, it looks a like robot that cartoon, known... the angry, angry something. <laughs> Ladybug. Like robot monsters. Mostly Angry monsters. On fire. Yeah, this was um this was Deertor, who always came over from Ireland, and they were mostly known for being on fire most of the time. I know a bot like that. Yeah, it might sound <laughs> familiar. That was sort of our equivalent back in the day. Because they just cover the thing in fur every single time. <laughs> We should oh, do here's... that. That's yeah. I have microscopic fur covering fusion. That's my excuse. <laughs> Where'd this fur come from? From the cats, right? <laughs> I, I picked out Deator because they were always one of the most beloved and friendly and helpful teams that took part in Robot Wars. The one example was there was a team from Australia that came over, and their robot just didn't move. So the Deator guys just gave him a spare robot to use. We got a question here. What was your favorite 
Robot Wars host, Tom? Favorite Robot Wars host would probably have to be Craig Charles. I mean, between Craig Charles and Jeremy Clarkson, Jeremy Clarkson just I've never seen a I've never seen a game show host more not want to be there than Jeremy Clarkson. And and Craig Charles just had the right amount of energy you needed and the right enthusiasm for it. What does this robot do? Is it a flipper of some sort? Yeah, so it's a spring loaded flipper. So no CO two or anything like that on board. It was all all springs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's a more later design there. And I got a fight from the first season when it was under the Deer Tour name. So they had so back in furry season, vests right? then too? But yeah, furry vests, furry robot, furry everything. So they were the first furries in the world. You could say <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to Google the history of that. <laughs> <sighs> they did They did do well occasionally. They won. They won a tag team championship with Pussycat in a later series and in our equivalent of like the founders award and most destructive award, they always won the sportsmanship award because they were such a lovely team and always helped everybody out and were always there to lend a hand. I mean, this compared to the 2000 battle bots, I mean, the bots are relatively the same, right? I mean, overall fight quality and everything, how they moved. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, There was 80% or, 90% 90% of BattleBots robots were very similar. There's a good comparison in, in the chat there. The Eator was basically the Robot Wars equivalent of someone like Rusty. Hmm. The robot you really <laughs> Nobody's loved. like Rusty. Come on. <laughs> the robot how, many really other teams, how many other teams from other European countries went to Robot Wars? You know, regular? We'll get to one from the Netherlands. Okay. And one from the Netherlands lined up. The Petunia but guys? We also had the who guys? Petunia guys? <clears throat> yes, one of the Petunia guys. Okay. One of the Petunia guys was on this team. Uh, I got a story about Petunia guys. <laughs> is it is it uh, available to be on live stream? Is the question. Uh, I don't know. Does shitting your pants fit in there or is that no good? <laughs> Wait I mean, a minute. This isn't very nice. It might be over <laughs> might a little bit. I won't oh say God. names. I won't totally say names. Fire. Let's say it was you. <laughs> yes. Yes, Reese. Yeah, he pooed last. That's night. a common sight right there of what would usually happen to Deer Toy. would be on fire and need someone with a fire extinguisher at the end of the fight every time. But they're still going. They still compete to this day with a featherweight design. Uh, here we go. Now, this is what I would call the UK's equivalent to Robotic Deaf Company. This is. Like our equivalent of Megabyte and Gigabyte, but if you crossed it with Ice Wave, because there's a petrol engine in there. Mm. Engines are always good for spectacular. <clears throat> they usually don't do much for action, but they sound like they're doing something. Yeah, but uh, 20 years ago, they were... <laughs> Discount Captain Shredderator? Uh, no, I think it might be better than Shredderator. This was, <laughs> yes, this very much so. The um yeah the first the first version of Typhoon was one of the few undefeated robots in Robot Wars, never lost a fight, and this is the uh, second version which they entered as a heavyweight into the main competition. Ooh, we got a we got a fun fact. Apparently, they actually fought Megabyte at one time. I don't they know did, where or when. And they won. It was Robo Games two thousand five, and they managed to win the fight. It was a very it was a one hit kill for both of them, but Typhoon was still going, but unfortunately oh. had to withdraw because they took so much damage. How was the spin up time on that? Well, I think we got a fight lined up of theirs, so we can have a look. But it was very, very quick for its time. Very quick, very loud, very powerful. I jumped out and I'm doing the um I'm doing the gigabyte fight. Okay. Ah, yeah. As someone says in the chat, they won the fight, but they took so much damage they couldn't be repaired <clears throat> afterwards. I mean, Megabyte over the years really hasn't changed externally too much. I think the size of the shell is darn near the same as it was back in the day. Yeah, I mean, before the, this this version of Megabyte for John 
we made was with five sixteenths titanium sidewalls. Uh, oh, they're still moving. Yeah. yeah. That's how they probably won. Yeah. But after that fight, everything inside was bent and thrown out of position, and they just couldn't repair it, so they had to forfeit, unfortunately. Whereas one Megabyte, spins, one drives. <laughs> yeah. I saw a comment from John Maladnik. Um, he said just a wire fell off, and that's why they couldn't move. Other than that, mm. they were fine. Well. The that's spark loser. plug wire? That's loser talk, though. It's like, yeah, you oh, always get that. You didn't, you didn't hurt us. A wire just fell off. Well, it worked at the beginning of the fight, and it didn't work at the end of the fight, and we were fighting. So, Weasel's always got fire as an excuse. Yep. Here we go. This is a good fight of theirs. So the heat final of series seven. If we didn't have the fight night format. It would be sort of round by round, and this is the last round of that episode. I don't have audio on any of these because on our last stream we got copyright warnings on every Robot Wars um, clip we showed. So Imagine loud petrol engine sounds. Just dub ice wave sounds over it. Sort of similar. Want me to want me to do some voice effects here for us? Or? <laughs> sure. Okay, I'll do the yellow bot. <laughs> 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 this doesn't even look fair. Well, they're still going. Not really. It was um, it was a team of um, air cadets for the RAF who put this design together. So well, that's that's what happens resources. when you go with an actual spinner to UK. It it kind of tears people up most times. Yeah, what kind of engine does Icewear run? Uh, it's not a weed whacker, is it? A it's a custom. It's a custom thing. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, but it's kind of based off of something. I thought. I think it's a part a partner concrete saw. Oh, concrete saw. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But he was sponsored by who was it? Like Hus Husqvarna or something? Right. Hmm. Yep. And that they built them at like super super custom. Oh. oh. Yeah, Banabots needs a pit. Put him a pit. No, they don't need a pit. No, you don't We've want a pit. pit. It's just backwards. I saw um, one comment saying um, Typhoon's run was just luck after luck after luck. And it basically was because a robot with no self writing mechanism and they got so many flippers on the way. But they managed yeah, to survive but... and they won the championship. You just well, don't have armor spinning. back in the days. As long as you're spinning full speed, you got a good shot of staying upright. Fortunately, they managed to, just about. Yeah, I mean, th think about Gigabyte versus Hydra, like creaming off the walls, probably doing 200 Gs, stayed upright for most of it. Actually, all of it. Did you flip? Did you even flip them over? Mm -mm. So this is whenever anybody asks me about the house spots, I'm like, well, I kind of don't mind as long as you don't change the outcome. But I do like a retribution for the dull or bad robot. But in this case, it's a little unfair. This robot's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Typhoon get, comes in on the action. Yeah, you got a lot of humiliation after the fact in Robot Wars. They're just dropping, See, dropping ovens, washing machines, a load of balls from the ceiling. Just dropping random stuff from the ceiling. I kind of like really? that. I kind of like that. They did never do it in an actual fight. It was always after the fact and to basically have some fun and embarrass someone after they lost. Hmm. Battlebots yeah, love need to get... more hazards, but better hazards. Like a corner flipper or something. Something that does like 8 to 10 feet, you know, like you get pushed in the corner, it flips you. Not necessarily a pit where it ends the action. But something that would just, you know, toss you. Let's just put Hydra in the corner. We'll just play play it by ear. There you go. That's what you can do with it when it's when it's had its run, when it's retired. Right. Just uh -huh. leave Hydra in there. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Um, just to let you know, your stream just got suspended for policy violations. 
Yeah, it did. Yep, I see that. Said your stream has been temporarily blocked because we detected copyright audio. We didn't even play anything. That was my voice effects. It was your sound effects. It was so I was good. too good. <laughs> yeah, they're watching you. Well, we're recording it, so we're not going to stop. <laughs> what a crockable, like, for how long? Until we fight it, I suppose. Uh. So anyway... Should we end it and just start a new one? Mm, I don't know. Put it put it Shit. in the put it in the old comments there. Hey, uh, we got suspended. We're starting a new one. Sure. Why don't you guys let videos. me in for five minutes and I ruin everything? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Where was well, this that's... audio at? There I wasn't the any. Audio out. There wasn't any. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. What the, the hell? Robo, did Robo Games fight have audio? Not that I heard. I didn't hear any. Hmm. <laughs> you didn't even Let's have audio drinking. on. <laughs> Where does okay, it say what so, for? Oh, uh, it, uh, it just says air. Um, all right, I'm going to end this. 